Hello friends, in this video we will be discussing about a lateral inhibition, a process, a mechanism where the excitatory neuron inhibits the action of neighboring neurons. Basically it involves neural coding or intensity coding of neurons, where we see how neurons differentiate what and how much the stimulus is acting upon dendrite, and how much action potential is getting generated within point of stimulation and around the point which involves surrounding neurons also. In neural coding, we have two coding mechanisms. First one is frequency coding and second one is population coding. In frequency coding, there is an increase in the firing rate of individual primary afferent fibers by increasing the size of receptor potential. While in population coding, we have the increase in the number of primary afferent fibers responding and the process is called recruitment and it is this population coding which takes place in lateral inhibition mostly. First of all, let's try to understand the concept how it occurs. Suppose we have a circular area with bunch of neurons in it. Let's say at this point it receives a strong stimulation at these two neurons. We can see the point of stimulation caps two neurons more specifically, but there are also other neurons, the surrounding neurons, which can also receive the same stimulus but with less stimulation. And it's here while lateral inhibition comes into play. The excitation of specific neurons inhibits the stimulation or excitation of neighboring neurons so that our brain pinpoints where the actual stimulus is coming from. If we take an analogy of GPS system, in GPS system where there are enough satellites and no barriers like we are outside the building, the GPS tells your actual location on map. It pinpoints where your exact location is. But when there are less satellites, weak signal, it won't tell your exact location. It always tells your location in 100 meters, within 200 meters, like this. That's why this lateral inhibition comes into play because it tells where the stimulation is so that there may be a certain response for it. Now we see there are three neurons. One in the center with green color and two blue neurons surrounding it. In this diagram, the green neuron receives a stimulus, so we call it a point of stimulation. But we see at this point the dendrite of other neurons are also getting stimulated, although less but are getting stimulated. But when there is lateral inhibition, these edges remain inhibited from getting stimulated. Now let's see how these neurons inhibit the surrounding neurons. We have the same three neurons with one center neuron getting excited. In this case, these are the action potentials of efferent neurons. In between these neurons, we see there are also interneurons which are inhibitory in nature. So it's these interneurons which are getting stimulated by the action potential of efferent neurons. Their stimulation means inhibition because they have inhibitory action. So lately, the excitation of one neuron inhibits the action of other neurons via interneurons. The negative and positive signs are here only to explain the inhibition and excitation, where inhibition is shown by negative sign and excitation is shown as a positive sign. And this is the action potential of apparent neurons finally. As you can see in this diagram, which illustrates us the concept of lateral inhibition. You can see a pinprick on skin in this diagram. The darker green is the point of stimulation, while the light green are the edges where stimulation is not much more pronounced. We see there are three neurons, A neuron, B neuron and C neuron, which are getting involved here and stimulated. But the center one, B neuron, is getting much more stronger stimulation than others. Therefore, in the next step, the B excitatory neuron laterally inhibits the A and C neuron via interneurons. And at tertiary level, we see only one neuron is getting stimulated and its neighboring neurons are completely inhibited. So this lateral inhibition enhances the perception of stimulus by inhibiting the neighboring neurons, as you can see in this graph also. The best case scenario is seen in vision inhibition, where center rod cells are getting activated and the peripheral rods are getting deactivated to create a sharp and bright image out of dark. So this is all about lateral inhibition. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.